I am Santiago Peralta. I am an associate professor of dentistry and oral surgery in the Department of Clinical Sciences here at Cornell. I've been here for 13 years, and um, uh, my area of research is trying to understand mechanisms of disease so we can hopefully come up with better diagnostic and, and therapeutic solutions for our patients. The current project that Briney has so generously funded is all about oral squamous cell carcinoma. Like I mentioned, our interest is understanding mechanisms of disease. And we do so from a molecular, genetic, and genomic point of view. And uh, by doing that, we try to identify mechanisms that uh, represent vulnerabilities that we can target with hopefully treatments that are less detrimental and more effective than traditional ways of doing so. Uh, so helping advance standard of care is our ultimate goal. Traditional uh, treatment for oral squamous cell carcinoma is surgical, uh, assuming there isn't, there hasn't been spread of the disease elsewhere uh, in the body, which is usually the case. So we sh usually when we diagnose the tumor, the, the dogs are uh, most often still good surgical candidates and surgery consists of removing not only the mass itself, but also surround, healthy surrounding tissue, which implies or means that we oftentimes have to remove, for example, a large por portion of the jawbone. So our goal is to be able to shrink these tumors to the point that we can perform much less invasive surgery and uh, impact in, in less detrimental ways the functionality of the dog. So we began studying these tumors before Rhiney started, but uh, soon thereafter, when Rhiney Canine Health Center began, we had submitted um, an internal grant proposal that was through another mechanism. They rapidly noticed it, picked it up, and actually funded it. That's where we uh, started to uh, develop a connection with Rhiney. And uh, right after that, uh, we started um, submitting proposals from the very first cycle. Uh, Rhiney was uh, supporting our work. And right now we have learned so much during the last few years. We have developed so many resources uh, that are now in place and we're taking uh, full advantage of them, including developing uh, laboratory models of the disease, mouse models of the disease that we have used to run preclinical studies. And now we have learned so much and advanced so much that we have finally gotten back to the clinic, where we, which is where we started. So we're uh, conducting a full um, cycle of translational research where we started in the clinic, we make observations, we collect specimens, we take them to a laboratory setting, study them, understand what we're uh, dealing with. And then if we do come up with something of interest, we cycle back to the clinic. That's where we're at right now. And um, it's been really rewarding because uh, we are seeing uh, results that we, we were hoping for, but in fact are a lot better than what we thought. I'm Bill Katz. I am a senior research associate working in the Serion lab. The highest level goal is to gain a better understanding of these oral squamous cell carcinomas in dogs and really try to understand what's driving them, how they work, and to use that information to obviously hinder them and to try to cure them. The distance, of course, what we'd like to have is a totally chemical treatment that cures the disease or at least drives it so far into remission that you can get five, ten years before it shows its head again. Oral cancer is a really interesting thing to be studying in this sense. Dogs and humans are very, very genetically similar. And they might not look it, but they've got a lot in common. And we know that in general, the same biological pathways drive life and disease in dogs as drive life and disease in humans. What we're doing would be the logical next step in bringing any drug to humans with the benefit that, again, we're veterinarians, we're clinicians who care about the dog's health, and so we are focused on making sure the dog itself is getting benefit out of this and is not just an experimental model to make sure the drug won't kill people once we go there. I did mention oral tumors are particularly interesting here. Um, dogs have all sorts of fun bacteria in their mouths that aren't really shared in the human mouth. And similar, human oral tumors are often driven by tobacco. That's probably the single number one cause of a oral tumor in humans, and similarly a lung tumor. Um, I don't think most pet dogs are smoking on the regular, so we can assume that most dogs that show up in the clinic have a non-tobacco-related tumor. That being said, 
There are still a lot of interesting similarities between the tumors. They got very similar causes in biological causes and what's actually driving them. Again, this RAS signaling pathway is heavily implicated in both canine and human tumors. Um, the specific drug we're looking at, we've actually found there was a very small clinical trial in humans that was giving very similar data to what we're seeing. And for the record, we're currently seeing a roughly 50% response rate. And that's what they saw in people. And so we really, not just hope, but we really believe that everything we're seeing in the dogs right now should be translatable to human medicine down the line once we find a collaborator interested in really diving into that. I have been in science doing drug discovery, primarily targeting cancer since undergrad. So that's over two decades now I've been doing this. It has been wild to me how rapidly we have started this project and gotten to the point where we're actually shrinking tumors. Like, it's not just hypothetical, we're not just writing papers, we are actually helping patients in the clinic, we are shrinking their tumors, we are improving their lives, and that is, that's been incredible for me, to actually be part of this. And um, I do just want to stress, this isn't just me, this isn't just Santiago, there's a reason there's over a dozen names on the paper we're hoping to get published in the very near future, this has been an enormous team effort all throughout the college. We've got collaborators up the road. We've got collaborators in Stanford. It's, there have been a lot of hands on this and every one of these hands has been critical. This is not an easy project. This is not an easy thing to make this stuff happen. And it requires all the people to be in the room, sharing their ideas, sharing their expertise. Everybody is interested in the project. And I think that's why we're making so much progress.